हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन सो नाउ वेट इज ओवर सो वी आर हेयर इन द इंग्लिश चैनल एंड वी आर स्टार्टिंग द केमिस्ट्री फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू सो आई थिंक लॉट ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स हैव ज्वाइन दिस सेशन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद चैप्टर नंबर वन क्लास इलेवन सम बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री so before starting this chapter i just want to introduce to all of you that there are many laws many laws in available in the chemistry but at the initial stage of the chemistry there are few laws which were got famous and gives like uh, they give the initial stage to derive the some chemical laws so let's start with the basic and uh, these laws in now modern chemistry they don't they are not that much important but but this one law of conservation of mass is very very important even now we use these laws so let's start to try to understand this law okay so in 1744 scientist lavoisier suggested that matter can neither be created and nor be destroyed what does it means it means that in any chemical reaction he is talking about any chemical reaction in any chemical reaction chemical reaction any matter can neither be created nor be destroyed what does it mean we will try to understand with one example let's say i have the reaction hydrogen reacting with oxygen and it is giving let's say h2o2 i know you at this moment you don't know what is this what is this we will try to understand slowly slowly but i know you have the little bit idea about this is the hydrogen gas this is the oxygen gas and what we are making we are making hydrogen peroxide what does it is it is hydrogen peroxide now let me write some the atomic weight or molecular weight of these molecules i am just writing those so let me write it so i am writing for the hydrogen it will be you know this will this will be 2 g how we know that the atomic weight of hydrogen you must have studied in your high school atomic weight of hydrogen is 1 atomic weight of oxygen is 16 you must have studied in your high school so hydrogen atomic weight is 1 oxygen atomic weight is 16 now let's see it so you have here two hydrogen so it will be 2 g and this is the oxygen it will be 16 to the 32 g and now here i have h2o2 which is the hydrogen peroxide so i will do 2 Plus thirty-two, which is going to be equal thirty-four. So now, see what I have. I have two thirty-two and thirty-four. Now the question is, why I am doing this? What is the reason behind it? Why I am calculating the molecular weight or atomic weight of these compounds? So let's see what is the reason behind it. If you actually calculate. Eight, you can see it is two and thirty-two, and this is thirty-four. Now, the total this is thirty-four. Yes, the total is thirty-four. So, what I can write? I can write the sum of the weight of reactant is going to be equal to sum of the weight of the product. This is what. actually the law of mass conservation mass conservation this is actually the law of mass conservation for the chemical reaction the weight at the reactant side it going to be equal to the product side because mass can neither be created nor be destroyed so there is no loss of mass there is no gain of the mass so that is what about the first law law of conservation of mass now if and of course that's why it is called as law of indestructibility 
you can see one more example i want you to all calculate and check it for it is it following the law of mass conservation say yes or no i am just writing for the nitrogen it is 14 and just check it i want you to all do it and show me that the mass at the reactant side or weight at the reactant side is equal to the weight at the product side just try to calculate add it and then we will see how this is going so let's start with me so we have the nitrogen we have nitrogen and in this case nitrogen we have two so one nitrogen has 14 so it will be ultimately 28 now here we have hydrogen but we have three hydrogen don't get confused at this moment what is the use of this number these are called as stoichiometry we will see in a very detail what is the explanation of the stoichiometry but at this moment our primarily focus is to understand the law of conservation of mass so we are just trying to applying this law of mass conservation conservation of mass on the chemical reactions now we have this 28 and if i will talk about this hydrogen my dear students so i have 3 into 1 hydrogen is 2 which is the 6 gram and here i have the ammonia ns3 is what is ammonia and this is i can say 2 into 17 nitrogen is 14 3 hydrogen which is equal to 17 so it will be 34 now can you check it is it correct that weight at the reactant side and product side is equal say yes weight at the reactant side is exactly the sum of the weight of the product side which is ultimately is 34 you can just add it 28 plus 6 is 34 28 plus 6 is 34 i hope this is making you sense to all of you now you understood what the levels here want to say here that the weight at the reactant side and product side is going to same that's why he said mass can never be created nor be destroyed now let's start the law of chemical combination with the second law what does second law say and let's try to understand in a very detailed manner so a given compound always contains exactly the same proportion of element by weight mass and irrespective of their source so it was really a easy law but in that time to saying this also requires some courage so what is mentioned he mentioned that if you get let's say h2o or if you get the carbon dioxide he said the formula of h2o and the carbon dioxide their ratio of the atoms their ratio of the atoms are always going to be same whatever the source if you got the water from the river that is the formula is this if you got the water from the ocean that the formula is this whether you got the water in the himachal you got the water in the chennai this is going to be same so irrespective to the source of the water so that's why we have the picture so always the ratio is two ratio one whether you have the ice you have the river from or you have the steam so from where so from where what source you got the water the formula is going to be same similarly from which source you are getting the carbon dioxide it doesn't matter their molecular formula their ratio of the atom is always always going to be same now let's move to the next law which is the law of multiple proportion law of multiple proportion a student does mistake at this uh, law i would say just try to understand slowly in this law so john dalton proposed of course when one element combines with other element to form two or more different compounds what does i am saying i am saying when i have one element let's say carbon and it is combining with oxygen carbon is combining with oxygen and it is making carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide so try to understand compounds the mass of one element which combines with the constant mass of other so this is the constant let's say 12 gram 
12 gram this is 16 gram and this is 32 gram you can just see it i i have written some 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 molecular atomic weight here so you have the oxygen is 16 and let's say carbon is 12 you just you must have read this in your high school if not we will see it in a detail very slowly just look at the into this now now so what it is saying it is saying that when you have one element which has the same ratio same amount but it reacts with the two different elements what yes it reacts with the two different elements which has the same like the element is same but the weight is different so it says their their ratio is going to be a simple ratio so 16 ratio 32 is one ratio 2 which is a whole number not a points not in a point so the ratio is nothing like one ratio 1.5 no so that is going to bear a simple ratio of one another so very simple so now you i think you got we have one element which has the same mass another same element but different mass so it is saying that they will give one two different type of compounds it is called as carbon monoxide and it is the carbon dioxide but the ratio of this element is gonna be same like uh, gonna be a simple ratio now let's see one more complex law of chemical combination law of chemical combination it is very simple for this you just look into this uh, what i am going to give you here we, we will see the definition later but initially i just want to explain it okay we will see this definition which you want to read from here of course i will see it later but before that we will see how it is going to work so let's say i have the water this is the water okay and uh, then i am taking the same element carbon and carbon I am taking the same element here carbon and here carbon and this same element is reacting firstly with hydrogen then it will make CH4 let's say and that that particular element is going to react with oxygen and is going to make the carbon dioxide something like this my dear students now please upload one short video okay i will come with that for you i will come with that soon okay so let's see before that okay so now we have carbon h2o ch4 and co2 carbon dioxide now what it is saying if i will say what is the ratio of here hydrogen and oxygen so you will say i have here two hydrogen so you will say two into one hello hello ranjapuram yes you can ask your doubt okay so now oxygen is one so this is 16 so it is 2 by 16 which is the 1 by 8 now the ratio of hydrogen and oxygen in these two different compounds so what i have done now just try to understand this picture the picture is firstly you have the one compound which has two elements and these two elements reacted with this same element to form a compound to form this compound and after that what we are checking we are checking the ratio of the elements present here hydrogen and oxygen the ratio is 1 by 8 and similarly we need to check the ratio of hydrogen and oxygen here so how many hydrogen i have here 4 into 1 because i know the atomic weight of hydrogen is 1 uh, how many oxygen i have 2 into 32 16 so 4 upon 32 which is gonna be equal to 1 by 8 oh my goodness so what it is saying that you have initially the compound and that reacts with the carbon with the element these element and the ratio is same the ratio is same so it is what the reciprocal combination of proportion reciprocal proportion so this is what about this law so he proposed that 
इफ टू डिफरेंट एलिमेंट कंबाइन सेपरेटली टू डिफरेंट एलिमेंट विच आर टू डिफरेंट एलिमेंट लेट्स लुक एट हेयर हाइड्रोजन एंड ऑक्सीजन टू डिफरेंट एलिमेंट कंबाइन सेपरेटली कंबाइन सेपरेटली विद द सेम वेट ऑफ थर्ड एलिमेंट विद द सेम एलिमेंट ऑफ थर्ड एलिमेंट द रेशियो ऑफ द मास इन विच दे डू सो एदर द सेम और सिंपल मल्टीपल ऑफ मास रेशियो इन विच दे कंबाइन सो अल्टीमेटली इट इज सेइंग दैट द रेशियो इज गोना बी सेम यस द रेशियो इज सेम नाउ यू कैन से दैट is there any uh, any other example is also possible yes because it is the law there are number of example let me tell you one more beautiful example so if we talk about uh, i would say let's say i have ps3 and i am just making the reaction of these two elements with chlorine so it will make pcl3 it will make hcl we have here three hcl this is a triangle now you can calculate the ratio of phosphorus and hydrogen here and then phosphorus and hydrogen here do it and let me know is they are same of course they are going to be same because all the compounds this combination is going to follow the reciprocal proportion so the ratio is going to be same like this just try it and let me know is this correct or not you are able to do it or not have you done it so let me tell you what will be the answer so it is very simple so you have phosphorus 31 and 3 upon 31 which is the ratio of hydrogen and phosphorus here you have phosphorus which is also 31 only one phosphorus three hydrogen so 3 into 1 which is 3 by 31 so it is same so the ratio is same so there are number of examples are possible but you must understand the law of course in the neat entrance exam the, those are they are not going to be asked this type of question they can ask which of the following combination is following the reciprocal proportion so for that combination you need to do this and you will check this ratio in the neat exam okay so now let's see law of combining volume so galusek proposed this law we understand this law in a very detail when we talk in about the gas 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 law when we discuss the gas law or gases state in the chemistry of course in the class 11th we discuss this law in a very detailed manner because we have in that time much understanding about these laws but at this stage just try to understand in little bit gases combine in simple ratio of their volume provided all the measurement should be done in the same temperature and pressure so let's say we have let's say hydrogen and chlorine both are gas both are gas now what i am doing so initially we have taken the same volume of this and the same volume of this so what i am saying gases combine in simple ratio of their volume provided all measurement are done in the same condition so both the gases have the same temperature and pressure this is most important condition you cannot neglect this condition and then you are making the compound so the ratio of this is very simple that is the one ratio one ratio two so that is going to be a simple ratio for all gases we have just taken the simple example now let's talk about the avogadro's law so for the talking about the avogadro's law you must have little bit understanding i am just taking we are just talking about the gas we are just talking about the gas i would recommend you just at this moment 
जस्ट लर्न दिस लॉ पी वी इक्वल टू एन आर टी फॉर दिस स्टेज दिस इज कॉल्ड एज आइडियल गैस लॉ आइडियल गैस लॉ एट दिस मोमेंट जस्ट लर्न दिस लॉ वाई इट विल हेल्प यू टू सॉल्व द न्यूमेरिकल्स ऑफ द चैप्टर वन ऑफ द मोल कॉन्सेप्ट बिकॉज मोल कॉन्सेप्ट चैप्टर इज वेरी डाइवर्स You can relate this chapter with ionic equilibrium. You can relate this chapter with chemical equilibrium. You can relate with this chapter with gas state, chemical kinetics. You just name in any chapter of physical chemistry. This is like a core. It is the center of the of physical chemistry. So you cannot miss this chapter. Okay. So be careful with this. So now you just try to remember. I'm just explaining the what does all these terms is mean. So let me explain you the meaning of the all these terms. so p is nothing but my dear student is pressure and v is volume n is the number of moles what is moles you must know it is the measurement way measuring way of chemistry or chemical reactions so all the chemical substance we measure in the terms of moles like in the normal life we use, we used to weight milk rice in liter and the kilograms respectively but in case of chemistry we use the mole for the measurement of the chemical substance okay and then r is nothing but is the universal constant universal constant and this particular t is nothing but a temperature i want you to do at this moment just learn this okay so what does this avogadro law signifies i'm just uh, making you giving you the significance of this just to show you how interesting chemistry is okay so what is interesting point here let me tell you let's say i will take just some example uh, before going to into this let me just uh, make one example for all of you let me make one more example for all of you let's say we have three containers try to understand very carefully this avogadro law is very beautiful law and it provides you enthusiasm to understand the chemistry and it gives the beautifulness of the chemistry okay so we have three container let's say this is the container one this is container 2 and this is the container 3 and then in container 1 2 and 3 all these three containers i have filled the gas okay let's say i have filled in this container hydrogen in this container neon and let's say in this container oxygen you want to fill it the oxygen so what i have three containers try to understand what i am saying i have say with me we have the three containers and all these three containers has the different gases okay say with me we have three containers and all these three containers have the different gases so we have different gases in it okay now now if we have the different gases in all these three containers and according to if i would say same conditions what does it mean same conditions for container 1 2 and 3 for all these three containers i have the same conditions listen very carefully what does it mean in the same condition for the gases which means pressure temperature and volume is same for all but but the gases are different in this container we have hydrogen we have neon we have oxygen we have all these three our gases are different okay so now try to understand what i am going to say that if i will follow this ideal gas law which is the pv equal to nrt pressure volume number of moles r is the gas constant and t is temperature so if i will follow that for any of these three gases what will happen i know the pressure for this gas this gas this gas i am just writing pv equal to nrt for this gas pv equal to nrt for neon pv equal to nrt for oxygen pressure is same for all that's fine okay 
वॉल्यूम इज सेम दैट्स फाइन आर इज कॉन्स्टेंट सो इट इज गोइंग बी सेम फॉर ऑल एनी वन टेम्परेचर इज ऑल्सो सेम बिकॉज वी हैव टेकन दिस सेम कंडीशन नाउ टेम्परेचर ऑल्सो सेम नैन वॉट then you people say according to mathematics if these all it has 1 2 3 4 5 terms and four terms are equal then ultimately ultimately this term for hydrogen this term for neon this term for i would say oxygen is going to be same ultimately it is going to be same so that's what avogadro mentioned he said in any container if we have put it the gas into it and all those gases have the same condition all those gases have the same condition then what will happen these all three containers having the amount of the gases is going automatically to be same they this is going to be automatically same so all these container have the same number of particles of the gases same number of particles of the gases how this is uh, we can say now ultimately in the result avogadro said all will have same number of same number of gas particles so this is what he refers in terms of very basic concept in a just a, this is the initial stage so in this initial stage what we have studied what we have studied so we have studied first law of conservation of mass today then we have seen uh, how this uh, like in the reaction how it is follows then we have seen law of constant and definite proportion then what we have seen law of multiple proportion then we have seen law of reciprocal proportion law of combining volumes then avogadro law and it is very interesting avogadro law we have seen the significance when all the three gets container which has the same volume have different gases they are different but ultimately the result of all these three container the number of gas particles is going to be same which is the similar for all these three okay so this is what i would say now let's look into little bit forward and i will try to explain you understanding of the mole very basic understanding of the mole so i said the mole is the way of the measurement of the substance in the chemistry okay so in the chemistry how we measure the uh, like molecules like uh, i want to take some compounds let's say oil or feso4 or nacl any compounds i want to make the solution for that making that solution or for that purpose in the chemistry mole is the unit which we used if you remember in the high school not in the high school but in your ninth class ninth you must have studied the seven standard units in that seven standard units you must have learned one unit that is the mole in that class you you are not aware with the significance of this unit but in the chemistry you will now understand that how much important this unit okay so let's see number of moles is nothing but by the definition number of moles is weight upon molecular mass so what is the number of moles number of moles is weight and molecular mass molecular mass is gram per mole gram per mole and the weight so let's say i am just giving you one question calculate the number of moles moles a is given 36 gram of water and second is 49 gram of h2so4 you must need the atomic weight so atomic weight of sulfur is 32 hydrogen is 1 oxygen is 16 so i want you to do do this question and let me know the answer try this question okay so how will you do this question let me tell you so first calculate the molecular mass for this it will be 16 plus 2 we 
which is the 18 for H2SO4, how much you will have? Let's say first calculate for the H2O, the number of moles of H2O will be weight is 36, molecular mass 18, which is equal to 2 mole. For H2SO4, weight is 49 and how much, how much molecular mass do you have, my dear students, just calculate 2 plus 32 plus 16 into 4, so it will be 2 plus 32, 64, so it will be 98, so you will have 49 upon 98, 1 by 2, which is 0 0.5 mole, this. So, this is the way we can calculate the number of moles. For today, I am just ending the lecture here. Okay. The reason behind it, I want you to all just have a recap of all the five combination laws and the basic formula for the number of moles. Tomorrow, we will try to understand this formula. I have just given you the formula so that you can just look into it. And tomorrow, we will start, not tomorrow, in the next lecture, we will try to understand this in a more detailed way okay so this is for the today is there any doubt you people have any doubt you want to ask them any question and query you can ask in the previous which we have discussed all the six laws is there any doubt in there any doubt in any law you want to ask any question Okay, so we will meet on next class. Have a good day. Best of luck.